The American culture and the American family is self-destructing. Shortly after birth, our children are rushed into the arms of grandparents or daycare attendants. For the next 18 years, they will spend the majority of their waking hours each week in an institution, not with their parents. Question, why bring them into the world if we're going to expect others to raise them? Substitute parenting is killing the American home. Surely by now we can conclude that the last 75 years of social engineering have been a miserable failure. Do you know anyone who would say that our culture is improving? Do you know anyone who would conclude that we are safer and more moral? Would anyone conclude that we have a greater sense of decency or that the American family is more stable? If not, then why do we continue repeating the same generational mistakes of the past? Solutions? For new generational momentum to be established, at least three principles of family life must be inoculated from the STDs, socially transmitted diseases, of this world. Number one, S stands for security. When I first wrote these words, the details of Yet a, another horrible tragedy was playing out in the news reports all across America. It seemed that another madman had shot himself and many others at a school in rural Connecticut. According to reports, the 20-year-old man first killed his mother, then directed his violent madness toward an elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut. Of the 28 dead, 20 are children between the ages of 6 and 7. One child was shot 11 times. The nation was in shock. All of us were asking, what has happened to America? Reports of horrific violence like this seem to be coming with alarming regularity. Have we really become such a dysfunctional society that even our grade schoolers are at risk in their own classroom? The world is self-destructing and our children are too much at risk. Given the level of moral degeneracy, the lack of respect for authority, and the constant threat of terroristic acts, a wise parent would give serious consideration to keeping their children close. It's time to rebuild the safe house. It's time to rebuild the home. America has the best teachers in the world, but even they cannot protect our children from the poor parenting that other students are acting upon. New gun control laws will not keep our children safe. More metal detectors, locker searches, and police officers in the halls will not solve this problem. To keep our children safe, we must bring them home. We must reintroduce a full-time domestic guardian, mom, who can train them within the security of their own safe house. Yes, I know it sounds extreme, but then again, so does the news that sexual abuse, violent bullying, and drug-related crime is common in the hallways of our American schools. And so does the news that 20 elementary school kids were gunned down in a small town in rural Connecticut. Ask yourself this question. What other tragic cultural indicators do I need to see before I conclude that it's time to make some radical decisions on behalf of my family? An extreme culture requires extreme parenting. Be warned. If you do this, people will look at you differently. They will second guess the wisdom of your decisions Many of them will talk about you as being a paranoid parent with extreme views. They will assume you are neglecting your child's socialization. Some will take it personally. They will conclude that your decision reflects poorly on them and they will therefore distance themselves from you. As this happens, remember one thing. God did not put you in charge of their home or their children and they should not be in charge of yours either. You have been entrusted with a family that is uniquely your responsibility. Many of those who will oppose you have already lost their children to the world or are well on their way to doing so. Don't allow others to dictate the way you run your home or the way you choose to protect it. If the massacre in Newtown, Connecticut teaches us anything, it should be this. It's time to do more than just hope that the same thing doesn't happen in our community. Christians must be willing to make some radical changes. It's time to give our children a schoolhouse that is in a safe house. It's time to invest in full-time domestic guardianship. The best home security system is the one God commands in Scripture. Titus 2.5 and 1 Timothy 5.14 clearly indicate that God desires Christian women to make a career out of preparing and protecting the home. It is their great commission. 
To restore righteousness to the family, we must guard the home and make it a God-sanctioned incubator for the next generation. It's time to discard the false teachings about a mild-mannered Messiah. It's time to embrace the actual nature of Christ. Grace is not always warm and fuzzy. When the house is burning down around us and materialistic humanism has lulled us into a disastrous slumber, blunt and to the point might be our only salvation. Please join me on live Facebook every Friday morning at 11 Central Time for an expanded discussion of topics like this. Last Days Live examines end times, current events, and real-time applications for the vigilant Christian. Archived recordings can be found at SonnyChowles.com.